checking my mic. One, two, one, two. Buffalo fans, what you gonna do? You're gonna go back to your lazy boy and sit down and watch the rest of the playoffs because you got beat by the GOAT. I saw some pathetic Buffalo fan, maybe not pathetic, let me say pitiful Buffalo fan with a sign saying, Josh Allen, the new GOAT, loading or something like that. Yeah, he's loading up the truck, loading up onto the plane. Tough fly back because the Chiefs are not going to one, two, three, but four consecutive AFC championship games. I mean, Buffalo knows something about four consecutive things. They lost four consecutive Super Bowls. Still haven't won one, but, you know. Oh, yeah, and what is it? Uh, Buffalo Bills, uh, tails never fails, <laughs> except in this game. And, uh, oh, wait, what's the other one they have? Uh, oh, yeah, circle the wagons. Circle the wagons right back to your lazy boy, baby, because Patrick Mahomes owns you just like he did the last AFC championship game. And if you're a Buffalo fan and you don't like what I have to say, I really don't care because one bottle of wine and I ran out. So I had to keep, had to keep it going to overtime. I mean, 13 seconds is all Patrick Mahomes needed to get into field goal range for a kicker that missed an extra point. And what's, what to him is a relative chip shot. And you still got beat. 13 seconds. How, I'm sorry, pathetic is the word to use here. How pathetic is your defense that you let a team get into field goal range in 13 seconds? You want to talk about our, our defense? Go ahead. Talk about our defense. Talk about it all you want to. Just keep in mind, we lost Tyron Matthew. Matthew, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, we lost Jaron Reed for a while. We lost Traverius Ward for a while. We lost nobody. You had everybody, and you still could not close the deal. If you're new here, Chiefs fans, welcome back to Over 50. Hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, hit that like button. Share this video with your friends out there. Comment down below. If you're a Buffalo fan, comment down, down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'd love to hear what you, how you would rebut how your team played tonight. I'm not going to get you wrong. You have a good quarterback. I'll, I'll give credit where credit's due. Joshua Allen is good. Josh Allen is good. I mean, look at his stats. 27 to 37, 313 yards, four touchdowns, two sacks for 16 yards. Patrick Mahomes, 33 of 44, 370, three touchdowns, no interceptions, two sacks, eight yards. This is a game that came down to which team would turn the ball over. Well, neither one would turn it over because turning it over means to me that you turned it over and the other team got it. Sure, there were fumbles, but Josh Allen got his fumble back because it hit Chief, it hit Frank Clark and then bounced right back into Josh Allen's nuts. And then Jarek McKinnon fumbled and Andrew Wiley pounced on it. Thank God for Andrew Wiley. I tell you what, I, I was criticizing him up one side and down the other, along with every other Chiefs offensive, offensive lineman in the last Super Bowl. But, hey, the big ugly fell on the ball. You know, Central Michigan, if that's where he went, I think that's where he went. Uh, hey, <laughs> you're the man. But um, if I'm a Buffalo fan, I've got to be wondering, why am I holding Tyree Kill's jersey on an under route that gave us a first down so we could go score a touchdown? I mean, Kansas City gave you every opportunity to win this game. They gave you every chance. They did everything but literally from the get-go just kneel down every single play to give it to you. And you couldn't take it. Doink an extra point. Miss a field goal. I mean, sure, you could argue, oh, we would have gone for two twice. Yeah, but you didn't. You didn't have to. You know, those plays are not give me. Ask the San Diego Chargers. They'll tell you about going for two. 
it doesn't always work out very well. Um, but in all rate, in all seriousness, uh, this was a very good game. Uh, yeah, it was nail biting. I was uh, screaming at Paramount Plus because it was doing that buffering thing for ninety percent of the night. But from what I understand, all of America has that problem. But um, Buffalo is a good team. I will give them props. I'll give them credit where credit is due. They have a hell of a defense. But when you're playing Patrick Mahomes, you better have like 11 Superman in gladiator suits with, you know, Medusa's ability to freaking turn people to stone if you're going to go up against Patrick Mahomes. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, I'm going to call it right here, right now. Patrick Mahomes is the new GOAT. He's the up-and-coming GOAT. We saw what happened to Tom Brady today. Tom Brady's on his way out. I mean, he wants to play till he's 45, but who says the Bucs are going to give him a contract next year? I mean, really. I mean, the Bucs might say, you know what? Let's see if we can get Aaron Rodgers in here. I mean, I think Aaron Rodgers is a good option, a little bit younger, definitely wants to get out of Green Bay. But back to this game. Um, this game was just amazing. Patrick Mahomes running the ball, seven carries, 69 yards. You can see right there on the screen. The Clydesdale coming back off his injury, seven carries, 60 yards, along at 22. Patrick Mahomes ran for a touchdown. Uh, Josh Allen didn't run for a touchdown. He's supposed to be the running quarterback. But Patrick Mahomes rushed for more yards on less carries than Josh Allen did. Devin Singletary, 10 carries for 26 yards. <laughs> That's what I say to that. Clyde, seven carries, 60 yards. What? Cole Hardman, two carries, 30, 31 yards, a touchdown. McKinnon, 10 for 20, 24 yards. Well, McKinnon's not our primary guy. Singletary is your primary guy. <clears throat> and Tyreek Hill, one carry for minus two because he ran back 15 yards so that Jerry Hughes couldn't, you know, catch him behind the line of scrimmage for a 10-yard loss. So I got no problem with that. And then just look at the Kansas City receiving. Hill, 11 receptions for a buck 50. Yeah, I see Gabriel Davis. Eight receptions, 201 yards, four touchdowns, a long as 75, eight receptions on 10 targets, blah, 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 blah. You know what he's doing next week? He's sitting in his lazy boy, a drinking. One of these. And then probably another and probably another. Cole Beasley, six for 60. Singletary, four for 25. Look at the Chiefs. Hill, 11 catches, a buck 50. Kelsey, eight catches for 96 yards. McKinnon, five catches for 54 yards. Pringle, five catches for 29 yards. Hill, Kelsey, and Pringle all had touchdowns. That's called diversity. That's called diversification. That's called spreading the ball out amongst your playmakers. You know, I mean, because once Pringle pops, <laughs> he just can't stop. I mean, the man is just amazing. And uh, Kansas State grad, as much as I hate to say it, I got to give props to the K-State grad because I'm a KU guy, blue and red through and through. But uh, moving on to the defense, you know, you guys should have exposed, Buffalo should have exposed the fact that Tyron Matthew was not out there and Dan Sorensen was. Because I'm, I, I can guarantee you, I'm not the only Kansas City Chiefs fan that was sitting back going, oh, shit. With Matthew out, that means Dan Sorensen is going to have to cover people. I think I'd rather suit up a fitted sheet and put a jersey on it and line it up at cornerback or safety or whatever and let him cover things better than Daniel Sorensen. But I got to I got to give Dirty Dan some credit. Look at Dirty Dan in the, in the defensive stats column: nine tackles, six solos, no sacks, no tackles were lost. But Daniel Sorensen didn't appear to have any busted coverage. Yeah, sure. Gabriel Davis made Mike Hughes look like he was a rookie and didn't know how to use his legs, like he was a toddler just learning how to walk and was open for a touchdown, but you left too much time on the clock. But, you know, we've been down that road. You know how it ended. I've already re recovered that for you. You know, I've already 
hash that out for you Buffalo fans. Of course, half of you, if you were here, you probably aren't anymore because you probably have left because that's what Buffalo fans do. When things go bad for Buffalo fans, they leave. Buffalo fans don't have... What's the word I want? They don't, they don't, they don't have the character to sit and watch or sit and listen to how their team played or how their team is being re, um, analyzed. This is over 50 perspective. I give my perspective. If you're a Buffalo fan and you can't listen to it and you took off, man, that's sorry on your part. I'm going to keep going on. Legereus Seed, nine tackles. Bolton, eight tackles, three solos. Sneed had six solos. Anthony Hitchens, six tackles, four solos. I mean, you can read it. I'm, I'm not going to insult you. I know we might have some Buffalo fans still here, but I'm going to assume that they are able to read and they know their numbers one through ten. I mean, they have to know the numbers one through four, considering they've lost four Super Bowls, courtesy of Marv Levy. Um, but uh, this is just a game where Buffalo should have taken advantage of the Honey Badger being out. And they didn't do that. They should have taken the fact, advantage of the fact that a kicker missed an extra point and a field goal. If that doesn't happen, this game is not even remotely going down the road that it went down. I mean, there's no even concern about my son texted me after Tyreek flashed the deuces because he was gone, you know, deuces because you're a loser and you're not going to catch me said, do we leave him too much time? I said, oh, hell yeah. We left him too much time. When they scored, do we have enough time? Hell yeah, we got, hell enough. we got enough time. We got three timeouts, 13 seconds, and Patrick Mahomes. Because Buffalo is going to play that drop everybody, rush four, which is stupid. Why do you – why? I mean, this is exactly why the Chicago Bears should not – if they haven't, if they have not interviewed Leslie Frazier, don't. This is why he flamed out as a coach his first go around. Leslie Frazier does not know what he's doing. I mean, yeah. that last Chiefs drive when they had 13 seconds, you rush three max. Hell, rush two, drop nine. I don't care if you put linebackers up at the line of scrimmage to make it look like you've got a four-man front and drop them back. You know, you don't rush four because, well, you saw how that worked out. You know, 19 yards to Tyreek and then, you know, what, another 19, 20 to Kelsey. Butker comes in and kicks the extra point. Josh Allen, tails never fails. We all know how that went. I'm not going to rehash that again. But, uh, man, I got to say, whew, game of the ages. I mean, I, as a Chiefs fan, this is just, you know, we have sat through so many years of, I mean, we went through the Herm Edwards, you play to win the game. We sat through the Dick Ramil. Larry Johnson's got to take the diapers off. Um, we sat through the, uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, quarterback, uh, head coach Haley, Todd Haley, and the Tyler Thigpen experiment. That was a joke when we went 1-15 and we drafted Eric Fisher. But I'm not going to slam on Eric Fisher. He, he was serviceable for us. He got us one Super Bowl. I mean, if you would have had him last year, you know, in the last Super Bowl, maybe things would have been a little bit different, you know, but not having both your tackles, you know, Mahomes was running for his life. That, but that's a whole nother game for a whole nother video if I decided to do that. This game was just amazing. I mean, it was ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. And unfortunately, one team has to end on the up. And the other team has to end up on the down. And what is it that, wait, what is it that Captain Comeover Chris Berman would always say? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It'll, it'll come to me. Hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah, that's right. 
Nobody circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, nobody circles the wagons anymore because we drive cars, we drive vehicles. Um, they circle the wagons because wagons are easier to maneuver, I guess, when you're trying to just go from the end of your driveway back up to your house so you can walk in and sit in your lazy boy because the season is over. So, um, hey, Buffalo, thank you so much for um, letting us make that draft draft day uh, trade so that we could get Patrick Mahomes. You know, cheers to you. Doing my little Budweiser 55, my Budweiser 55 promo. If you're a Weight Watchers person, two, two points per can. Can't beat it. But, uh, yeah, that was the game, guys. It was an amazing game. I mean, you can look at the, the stats. I mean, you know, it was, what, 14-14 at half. And then we took the lead. Butker looked like the anti-Butker. You know, we were cussing his name. I was cussing his name. I was, like, wanting to kick his butt instead of calling him the butt kicker. But I got to give the man props. Mahomes goes down in 13 seconds. And again, how do you let, how do you let a team go on the 25 yard line, get into field goal range in 13 seconds? That's why Leslie Frazier should not be the Bears next coach. If you happen to be a Bears fan and you're watching this, and I hope that somehow all the little tags and stuff I put in here, hopefully some. Bears fans get in here and can hear what I'm saying. Y'all don't want Leslie Frazier as your quarterback or as your head coach. You don't want him messing with your quarterback. You don't want him messing with nothing. You don't want him involved with your team. Now, Brian Dable, that dude deserves a job. But I'll tell you what, you know who else deserves a job? How about Eric Bieniemy, Offensive coordinator for the Chiefs. Four consecutive AFC championship games. Hey, Bill Parcells used to say, your numbers, numbers, your numbers are what you say you are. Well, the numbers for Buffalo is 0-4 in Super Bowl wins because they don't handle the big game. They can't handle a big game to get back to the big game. Kansas City, well, we'll see what this, what we'll see what this has to deal with. I mean, I might be singing a totally different tune on Joe Burrow and the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. But, uh, you know, I, they have to come to our house. So, once again, the road through the AFC runs through Kansas City. Kansas City, here they come. Kansas City. Kansas City, here they come. So, come on, Bengals. Who day? Come on, bring your who day or who dat. We'll see you next weekend. AFC Championship game. Buffalo, we'll see you whenever the schedule says we'll see you because we're still playing and you're not. So, with that, Chiefs fans, a little tomahawk chuck and uh, go Chiefs. Later.